What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am super duper excited because I have a brand new chip from Intel that just arrived on my doorstep yesterday after I came back from CES. This is the Core i3-7350K and it's a very exciting processor right now because it's a Core i3 chip that is fully unlocked. It has an unlocked multiplier and it supports hyper-threading. Um, this is really exciting stuff because up until now, we have not seen a chip of this caliber. The thing that comes closest to it as of late is the Pentium G3258, which was the anniversary edition uh, chip from Intel that kind of paid homage to the old days of overclocking when you could buy a budget chip and still push the uh, clock speed quite far. So the Pentium G3258 had a lot of things going for it. For one, it was dirt cheap, $75 MSRP thereabouts, uh, which is way cheaper than this, $180, which is still fairly Really budget oriented but yeah it was dirt cheap and also a great overclocker I was seeing review websites hit or get one gigahertz gains with relatively little effort the other problem though with the G3258 is that it was not hyper threaded it only had two cores and that was it so it did while it did really well in single threaded applications it kind of took a back seat when it came to multi-threaded programs uh, like rendering for example and I'm curious to see how much how far the hyper threading actually goes for a chip like the 7350k here the other thing is that uh, the, the G3258 didn't have the most cache. It had three megabytes of L3 cache compared to four on this chip, um, which doesn't seem like a huge boost, but it actually is. 33% increase in cache means there's more data that can be stored to the internal cache here for really quick access. Uh, and that could be a huge bottleneck if you don't have enough of it. So I'm also curious to see how that affects our gaming performance and our rendering performance in today's tests. Now, the other thing to note about this guy is that it comes 4.2 gigahertz out of the box. And again, with Katie Lake family, I'm expecting at least 4.9, possibly 5 gigahertz on a manual overclock in the BIOS, which would be pretty sweet. Again, that would help us a lot with single-threaded applications, but uh, when it comes to multi-threaded apps, we're going to see how far these extra threads, these four threads, can actually take us. And we're going to be comparing this chip to the Core i5-6600K. That's only because I don't physically have a 7600K on hand, which is the Skylake equip. I'm sorry, the, uh, the KB Lake equivalent to the 6600K, both Core i5s. However, the performance difference between those chips should be very marginal. And so comparing this to the 6600K should still give us a pretty good idea of how close we get in terms of performance coming from a $180 i3 to a $250 i5 within KB Lake. Now, a final note of mention before we dive into the testing hardware is that this chip is only rocking a 60 watt TDP, so it's fairly power efficient. And on top of that, when we're dealing with only two cores on the die, we actually have a lot less heat to deal with inside of the overall package, which is gonna be really good for potentially overclocking. We have a bit more thermal headroom in that, in that degree, uh, pun intended. And we also don't have as much requirement in terms of our CPU cooler. So you might actually even be able to save a little bit money uh, get, getting like a $25, $30 cooler to slap on this guy as opposed to maybe having a water cooling solution or an AIO on top of a Core i5, for example, if you are gonna be overclocking. On that note, so let's go ahead and take a look at the testing hardware that we have over there, because Lord knows I don't want to spoil you guys with my beautiful face all day. So this be the test and setup that we be rocking, matey. Yar! So you can see here we've got a brand new Z270 board. This is the Asus Tough Z270 Mark I. Very nice looking motherboard, by the way. Uh, that is going to be rocking, of course, a GTX 1060. That is a Fender's edition from Anveria. Now this is running stock. This is gonna be running stock throughout the entire video. As far as memory goes, we've got 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX. That is the low profile stuff at 3200 megahertz. And right now we're actually got the, I got the 6600K in there humming. It's purring, purring like a tiger. Uh, it's 4.6 gigahertz overclocked and we've got it being cooled by a Corsair H100i GTX V2. That's, that's, that's right, right? The, I think the names on their coolers get more and more confusing. We've also got a 750 watt power supply, the HX series from Corsair. This is the uh, original power supply I used in my first ever build uh, back in 2011, but it's still a working power supply. It works pretty nice. And then we've got a one terabyte Crucial MX200 right here. Uh, with uh, our OS and games uh, and everything else. So that's pretty much what we're looking at right now, guys. You can see I've got Unigen Heaven just kind of warming things up right now on the test bed. And uh, well, let's go ahead and just rock, rock this shit. I'm gonna go run all the tests. We've got three, three or four games and uh, a synthetic or two and some rendering tests. So I'm gonna fire those up and then I'm gonna go ahead and just swap out 
the uh, 7350K. I'm gonna put the 7350, where is it? Where is it? Oh God, I thought I lost you. I was so scared. I was so, no, don't ever do that again. So after the 6600K gets all tested, we're gonna go ahead and slide in the 7350K. I'm gonna go ahead and overclock the crap out of it. And I'm gonna circle back to you guys and let you know what kind of clock speeds I was able to get away with this beautiful Core i3. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's coming. It's coming. All right, y'all, the 7350K has been installed. I have given it a hefty overclock to five gigahertz. Holy moly, that is pretty sweet. Uh, the uh, the voltage that I dialed in was 1.42, um, very similar to some other review sites that have already posted the reviews on this chip. Uh, it's reading the, the core VID, the core vid is 1.1, goes to fluctuates between 1.1 and uh, 1.2 uh, as of now. We are rendering in Adobe Premiere Pro. I, I threw in a five minute 4K clip at uh, 32 megabits per second bitrate. And you can see here we've got all four, we got, we got both cores and, and all four threads that are just freaking maxed out at 100%. So this is taxing the CPU pretty much across the board. And uh, you can see the rendering going down, going down right there pretty smoothly. That is a very small sneak preview of a, a sketch that I've got coming out very soon. But uh, yeah, so far it's looking pretty good. The overclock is just absolutely beastly. And of course, when you're dealing with fewer cores, it allows you to hit higher clock speeds on those said cores. So that's why a lot of, if you look at the overclocking uh, world records, you'll see that the highest frequencies hit are on single core. Now, if you guys look over here in hardware monitor, you can see that this is still an engineering sample for sure. It's not even being picked up. It just says Intel processor. There's no SKU available. And because of that, it's only showing uh, our, our frequencies and our utilizations. There is no temperature readout here. So unfortunately, I don't really, I can't give you guys any temperatures right now. I can assure you that they're probably not gonna be as hot as the 6600K, um, but so far the, the PC hasn't caught on fire over there, so I think we're in good shape. I'm gonna finish rendering out this video. We're gonna run the rest of our benchmarks and then we'll be ready to compare the results to our Core i5 and draw some conclusions about our 7350K. All right, y'all, the results are in. Let's go ahead and see how these two CPUs stack up against each other in our tests. The first test was 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme, and it's a very consistent benchmark from run to run. And so with the Core i3, we got a score of 5,558, and the Core i5 6600K received a score of 5,656. There's really not too much of a wide gap there, so that's a good start for the Core i3 so far, but in my experience, 3D Mark Fire Strike does not always tell the full story in terms of real-world gaming performance. So so the first game that we actually tested was Doom, and all the tests that I ran for gaming anyway uh, were tested at 1920 by 1080 with ultra settings. Doom saw a frame rate of 103 on both systems. Whether it was rocking the Core i3 or the Core i5, we got 103 frames per second on average, which really excited me at first because if we can see similar performance uh, in games between the 7350K and something like the 6600K, then why the hell aren't we just buying i3s at this point and just saying, screw the 7600K, um, because there's hardly any bottlenecking going on. But before I got too excited, I did run Metro Last Light and saw that there was a bit of a bit, bit more gap there. We went from 79 frames per second with the Core i3 to 84 FPS with our Core i5. And that's still really not too bad. That's a 6% slowdown. And I would gladly take that performance hit in order to save, you know, 50, 60, $70 on a Core i3 chip. However, in our last test, which was Grand Theft Auto 5, and I always use this test when I'm benchmarking CPUs and doing CPU comparisons because it is such a CPU bound and intensive game. Not to say it's not GPU bound, but it definitely taxes the CPU very heavily. And that was quite a kicker in the gonads, let me tell you. We went from 48 frames per second on the Core i3 to 60 FPS with our 6600K, a 20% slowdown going from four physical cores to two physical cores with hyperthreading. Yes, there will be bottlenecking with the Core i3 with this particular CPU in certain games. So this could be an issue if you're trying to squeeze the most performance out of your GPU and don't want to get bottlenecked by your processor. Maybe the Core i3 isn't so hot 100% of the time in gaming. Let's see how it did in rendering though. Our first test in this category was Handbrake, which is very much a multi-threaded application uh, for rendering videos. And the video I used, the sample clip, was a three or four minute screen capture of GTA 5, rendered out at 1920 by 1080 using H.264 encoding. And the Core i5 6600K rendered that in one minute and 58 seconds, just under two minutes. And the Core i3 rendered out the same clip in two minutes and 46 seconds. So we saw almost a 33% slowdown going from the Core i5 to the Core i3. Finally, with the more strenuous rendering test, which you guys already got a peek of, Adobe Premiere Pro rendering out a four minute, I'm sorry, a 4K five minute clip at 32 megabits per second target bitrate. 
yielded 11 minutes and 18 seconds for the Core i5 to render that out, whereas the Core i3 rendered it in 16 minutes and 13 seconds, going from 11 to 16 minutes simply because we don't have the same number of physical cores. And I think the moral of the story here is threads do not equal cores. Having a dual core processor with hyper-threading is by no stretch any match for a quad core processor with four physical cores when it comes to multi-threaded applications, as clearly indicated by these render tests. So what I would take away from all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you have the money to spend on a Core i5 unlocked CPU, absolutely go for it. Do not try to skimp or cut corners by getting the 7350K Core i3 because it does not simply compete in the same space, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. There's no way in hell that Intel would make a $180 chip perform even close to its Core i5 counterpart because that would essentially make it obsolete. No one would buy the Core i5. They could just buy uh, something that works just as well for 70 bucks less. And I think another angle to approach this from is if you did only have, say, $180 to $200 for your CPU, does it make sense to go from the Core i3 7350K to the Core i5 7400? Sorry, someone's opening the garage door. There's nothing I can do. Just keep rolling. The Core i5 7400 is a quad core chip, but it is locked. It doesn't have uh, any potential headroom to go any further than its three gigahertz out of the box frequency. I think the best choice between those two CPUs is gonna heavily depend on your needs as a user. So if you're gonna be using multi-threaded applications frequently or you're rendering videos out constantly, then I would say go for the entry level Core i5 because at the end of the day, even if you can't overclock it, having four physical cores is going to be way more beneficial with those particular tasks than say having a higher number of logical cores by the way of hyper-threading. Now conversely, if you aren't using multi applications often and your main focus is on programs that utilize only one CPU core at a time, then the 7350K could make a lot of sense, especially if you're on a super tight budget of around $180 for your CPU. Not to mention overclocking. This thing is a great overclocker. I do want to reiterate that up to five gigahertz with really no other tweaking other than changing the BIOS and the multiplier, which is super nice to see. Not to mention those higher clock speeds are going to make those single threaded apps run a lot faster and make your day-to-day -day tasks just feel overall more more zippy in the end. But that is pretty much, I think, all I wanted to say about the Core i3 7350K. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is a hugely, hugely talked about CPU right now on the Intel side of things, and I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. So also feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you guys really soon. And until we meet again, I'll see y'all in the next video.